What would you do? You would never put a threat in there that after you die, this is what's gonna happen. That's stupid. <laughs> You're God, you don't need that. You can actually control the weather and you can control history. Of course, that's what you would do. And that's what God did. All right, Desiree, go right ahead with your question. You are live on the air. Okay. Um, so my question is a combined New Testament and Hebrew uh, scriptures question. Um, since there's like this promise of not burning in hell and everlasting life in the so-called New Testament or Jesus writings or whatever you want to call it, um, what good or what gain is there in keeping the Torah? The flip side is, if Christianity's core tenets are not true and Jesus is not the Messiah, worshiping him is idolatry, and you get approximately the same punishment as you would for not believing in Jesus from a Christian vantage point. I mean, really, everything's at stake. If Christianity is true, you should definitely be a Christian. It's a very bad idea to not be a Christian. If Christianity is not true, then it's raw idolatry— and then a person is punished, both in this world and the world to come. So everything's at stake. I mean, isn't that the point? There is then life after this life? Oh, yes, very much so. Except, listen, Mama, listen to me very carefully. Except it's never a threat in Tanakh. Now, the reason it's not a threat, it means heaven and hell is mentioned in Tanakh. Resurrection is mentioned in Tanakh. Thank you for your question. The resurrection and afterlife is mentioned, but never in the course of a threat. Why? Because you can't test it. It's unfalsifiable. That's with fake religions. There really is a hell, and there really is a heaven, and it's alluded to in Tanakh. And there are a couple of places where it's spoken, but in the, whenever it is mentioned in the Hebrew Bible, it's not in the course of a threat. Why? Because the point of the threat is to get you to change how you behave. What good is it if you only discover the truth? After you're dead, you can't repent. Tanakh is not going to treat you like children, treat you like men, and say to you, look, if you turn away from God, there are going to be consequences immediately. It's going to stop raining. If it stops raining, your land is going to be dry. There'll be no food for you or for your animals. You'll go to war, your enemies will defeat you. That's the same reason why when someone smokes a cigarette, right? So first when they smoke a cigarette, they're given a little warning because the person starts coughing right away. But a person can acclimate himself to this noxious smoke, and then the person smokes. But what happens? Hashem wants you to stop smoking, right? So what happens? Eventually, a person can't walk up a flight of stairs anymore. Eventually, a person wakes up in the morning and is coughing his brains out, right? Eventually, she wakes up and she feels her chest is heavy like there's something sitting on it, right? And she goes, what am I doing? I'm dying from the inside out and quits. So there are things that are happening along the way when people are doing things to their bodies in the physical realm as a warning, like quit. And that's why... You, Millions and millions of people quit because they feel the consequences. What good is it that you don't find out the consequences until you're dead? The, and then people give it up, and then Hashem does a wonderful thing. A person's 30 years old. He gives up cigarette smoking. And as time goes on, his body rebuilds itself and heals itself. And all those organs begin to, after a number of years, very often people who smoke, their bodies completely rebuild themselves. Their damaged cells rebuild themselves. And they have the same lifespan and health expectations as though they never smoked. That's repentance. It's the same thing. Of course, there is a, an eternal separation from God. There is. For very wicked, for sure. But it can't be a threat because you don't know. You don't know if you're going to hell for believing in Jesus or for rejecting Jesus, right? Hashem always says to the world, keep your eye on the Jew. God will always preserve the children of Israel. It's an eternal covenant. can't be broken. Watch the Jew. 
because that covenant is unconditional on corporate Israel, but the, no individual Jew has that guarantee. So Deuteronomy 7, verse 9, only to those who love me and keep my terror. So which Jews did God preserve? Not the Jews who became Christians and Sadducees. They're all gone. They disappeared. Doesn't mean they didn't have children. They did, but they lost their Jewish identity. Why? Because they weren't keeping the covenant. Right away, do tshuva on the spot. So there, so this is a little critical. There, there is punishment. Why? I shouldn't really want to punish you. He just wants you to start coughing so you quit smoking. <laughs> and he wants you to do that while you're alive. Th that's the whole point of it. So therefore, the punishments happen here. If Christianity is not true, which it isn't, and believing in it, it's complete idolatry. If it is true, then not believing in it is you're going to hell. But, but it can't be a threat of what happens after you die, if that's the chief threat, and it is. Try telling one of your family members or friends that I don't believe in Jesus anymore. What's the first thing they're going to say? The first thing. You're going to go to hell. Why? Why is that the number one issue? Like, wh why? They really, everyone is so devoted to everyone's eternal longevity? Like, what, really? Like, that's what you care? No, because that's the chief threat. People are terrified about death. And they're mortified about having that. And if you're saying Jesus is not the Messiah, it rattles everyone. We're the only creature on this planet that is aware very early on in our lives that we are going to die. It's very traumatic. It's a big fear people have, like what happens. People can plan for their death, wills and so on, but to actually contemplate it, it's very traumatic. So people want to think that well, dying is not permanent, and we somehow live again. This is, but how do I get on the I'm going to live again train? Oh, so th th that's what, but Tanakh can't threaten you that way because there's no coughing, there are no symptoms. We use, what good is it to threaten someone that something will happen to you after you're dead? You can't speak to dead people. So it works. It's very effective. It's very effective in keeping people in your respective religions. But it's a terrible threat. If you're God, I mean, just, just one second. Imagine for a moment you're God, right? And you want people to live in a certain way, right? What would you do? I mean, this is like a no-brainer. If you were God, okay, or you, like God is asking you, what do you think? I mean, it's ridiculous. If you were God, what would you do? Would you, and you're writing a book inspiring a prophet to, to write oracles, to record oracles so that people would pay attention to it, and you're God, and you're God, you're God, what would you instruct Moses to write in there? Would you say to Moses, tell the people that if they don't follow me, they're going to go to hell? No, you would never, you're God, remember, you're God, what would you do? You would, you would say, okay, it's going to stop raining. And why? Because you're God. You can control the weather. Your crops are not going to grow. You can control that. You control everything. Your animals are not going to have food. You're God. You, you, you will lose all your battles. You're God. You control history. And if you follow me, then a thousand will flee from one. You're God. You control history. Don't you get it? This is the whole elephant in the room. Think, think, think. If you're God, you control the weather. <laughs> and, and you control history. So why would you opt for the threat that anyone can make when you can go with the threat that you can observe as highly falsifiable? The Jews who are loyal to me will remain, and all the Jews who are not loyal to me, that is, believe in Christianity, become atheists, communists, give up on the Euro Torah, they're all going to disappear. If you're God, that's a threat you'd make. Why? Because you can really control that. It's not like Sadducees weren't proud to be Jewish. They lost the covenant because they didn't believe in the Euro Torah. It's so, just to just think, because we're creating the image of God, so it's okay to think that way. If you were God, would you, and you wanted your creation to follow in a certain path and reject another path, you would put threats in there, there are consequences to behavior, what would you do? You would never put a threat in there that after you die, this is what's going to happen. That's stupid. <laughs> You're God. You don't need that. 
you can actually control the weather and you can control history. Of course that's what you would do. And that's what God did. We, I mean, we are creating the image of God. That's why we think the way God does, God's infinite, but we, our mind is divine. We, have, we are Bluetooth wired. We're, we're not squirrels. We're not just highly intelligent uh, monkeys. We are. We have a neshama. So that's why God threatens with rain and war and pestilence and so on, because that's highly falsifiable. And you're God. You can do it. If you're not God, do not threaten that. If you are not God, do not threaten about the weather, because you can't control it. I rest my case. Thank you for that question. If you enjoy this program, please like and subscribe. אדון עולה, אשר מלך, וטרם כל יציר נברא, לעת נעשה בחפצו כל. אזי מלך, אזי מלך, שמו נקרא, ואחרי כפלות הכל. לבדו, אם לא כנועי